Uh, yeah, first up, let's start with Boeing. All change. The uh, playmaker has revealed that its chief executive, David Calhoun, will leave by the end of this year. The company also said the boss of its commercial airlines division will retire immediately, while its chairman will not stand for re-election. The firm, of course, is under pressure after a door panel on a plane blew out in mid-air in January. No one was injured during the incident, but the firm's safety record has come under renewed scrutiny. Well, let's get more on this now from John Grant, who's an independent aviation analyst. Uh, good afternoon uh, to you. Um, firstly, change at the top does often follow this sort of thing, doesn't it? But do you think this will address the underlying issues here regarding safety? It's John Strickland, by the way, rather than John Grant. Oh, apologies, John. My apologies. I'm badly misinformed there. But <laughs> So, he's, yeah, he's I, there has been these underlying issues, hasn't there, uh, with the technical side of things, safety-wise. Yeah, do you feel like this will convince people? I think this marks a fundamental change. And, of course, we're talking about a, a time scale that the head of Boeing Commercial Airplanes leaving immediately, the CEO still in post till the end of the year. I'm not normally a person who would flippantly say, you know, regime change is necessary. But I think this is very, very symbolic and critical to Boeing's uh, rehabilitation to go back to a position of uh, where it was, a preeminent uh, industry manufacturer known for quality and obviously above all safety. We've seen so much going on in the last couple of years since we had the, the grounding of the, the MAX 8 aircraft after two fatal crashes. We've had the last few months, one day after another, news flow since we had the door come out of the Alaska 737. I think what this does is send a message in every respect, internally to the workforce, that at the top, things are changing. It's a break from the past. Outwardly, both to uh, airline customers, many of whom have been critical uh, of the business, if not directly calling for the heads uh, of the CEO or the head of commercial airplanes. And of course, to, to the traveling public as well, and, and, and indeed Wall Street. So it's going to take some months to do. And I think what we need to do is look to the future and make sure that now this uh, this is going to happen, that, that the right people are indeed appointed, who have the right skill set, the right experience to lead Boeing forward, take it out of this very uh, unfortunate period of years it's experienced recently. Uh, what do you think the impact might be on passengers when we see major surgery needed like this? It does tend to hit uh, the production line, for example, and then that finds its way through to tickets. Well, there should be no effect on, on production. I, I mean... It is a technical business for our production processes. Of course, the, the focus, the spotlight is already on quality, the lack of quality, the, the uh, failures we've seen uh, that have led to the most recent uh, uh, accident, for example. That work has to continue. Dave Colquhoun, while he is still CEO, has said that he'll do everything possible to ensure that it's put right. The removal of executives below him now, including Stan Deal, head of commercial airplanes, recently the head of the 737 program, the one which is primarily the spotlight, have happened. But those processes have to continue to be one adhered to strengthened. We have the regulators, uh, not least for FAA, looking at close scrutiny. Boeing's in the midst of a 90-day period when it has to come up with an action plan to put these things right. So it has to continue. Deliveries are still taking place to airlines. That in itself is a challenge for many delays, a lot of unhappy customers, including Ryanair, for example. But from a customer point of view, yeah, maybe there could be some peripheral impact on ticket prices this summer because capacity is tight. We've again already heard that from Ryanair and others. Boeing is not uh, alone in, in having aircraft with uh, technical challenges this summer, so capacity is tight. But I think day-to-day uh, -day, uh, the industry will perform within those constraints uh, as it otherwise would. OK, John, listen, John Strickland there. Strickland, uh, thank you very much indeed for your time there for that analysis there on Boeing. Well, Let's uh, get a bit more uh, reaction uh, from New York on this. I think we can cross now to Michelle Flurry, our North America business correspondent. Michelle, uh, early days on the stock market, I guess. The reaction, though, has been, been pretty good so far. Uh, will this be enough, do you think, to, to convince shareholders, investors? I mean, I think there's a sense, at least initially, uh, from analysts and investors that this will kind of help the share price uh, in part uh, they think it's a positive shake-up for Boeing, uh, that this is a step forward in an attempt to win back trust. Um, that being said, though, 
it is just a first step. You know, I wanted to read you a, a, a sort of quote we had from someone throwing a bit of skepticism, um, saying, look, uh, there could be some cultural change happening at Boeing. We've long thought that the issues at Boeing have been seated in cultural challenges. That was Cameron Dawson, um, who is a chief investment officer at New Age Wealth. I think a lot will depend on who Calhoun's successor ultimately is and how far the company is able to show that it is changing the culture from the top. Um, and so that really is sort of going to be the kind of the test here. But obviously, the company felt it had to do something. It was under increasing pressure, not just from the financial sector, but you also saw from government officials and indeed from its customers. And I think that's why you've got Dave Calhoun, for example, saying he is going to step down, falling on his sword and trying to kind of address some of the criticism that has been leveled at this company. Yeah, I, I mean, normally when this we do get sort of big changes, as I was just chatting there with John. Um, I mean, do you sort yeah. of feel like the trick is they have to show they're taking some serious action, but kind of keep business carrying on as normal as best as possible? Not too much turmoil, just try and steady things. Well, look, I mean, I think, you know, what makes Boeing different from certainly other companies is that you're talking about essentially two main players in this market. Boeing is the American sort of major player here. Uh, the European other player is Airbus. Essentially, we're talking about a duopoly. When there are only two players, I think ultimately uh, the customers, in this case the airlines, don't really have much alternative in terms of where they can turn to to try and buy their aircraft. They're already facing these long delays waiting for deliveries of planes. I mean, who else are they going to go to? Where are they going to go? Airbus is already sort of uh, pretty much at full capacity. Uh, and so I think Boeing has room to get it right. But what we're seeing here is the pressure on the company to say you need to go further. And I think this is the attempt by management and the speed with which you're seeing the head of the commercial uh, side of the company leaving immediately, not waiting. Uh, I think they're trying to send a message. We are trying to right the ship. But right now, a once great American company uh, is certainly struggling.